I've been messing around with making cogs in SketchUp um, and uh, now I've found a way to attach a cog fairly securely onto this little micro servo. Obviously this is part of a larger mechanism that I'm thinking about uh, for a particular project I've got in mind. Um, but I'm just demonstrating to myself um, that this cog and the uh, rack um, this being the rack here, um, have interlocking teeth um, which fit well enough to uh, to move the rack without too much backlash in it. There obviously is backlash. These two things are laser cut out of 3mm acrylic to show you what the cog looks like here. Uh, this bit is the yellow piece here is 3mm acrylic and the little piece stuck on the top is 1.5 millimeter acrylic um, and I needed that bit on the top because the hole, the initial hole that you have to make for the servo I um, don't know what you call this, the little servo fixture coming out of there is obviously bigger than the top of the screw so this is just glued on with uh, good old uh, solvent cement um, probably wouldn't even be necessary but that just gives you something to screw into down into the centre of the servo and the screw here is just the one that came um, in the little pack of fittings that you normally get with these servos uh, so the, so the screw is specially intended to screw into that servo fixture there. Uh, the screw is roughly 1.7, 1.8 wide on the thread. I don't know what kind of standard that converts into. I'm generating the servo position using this uh, Arduino here. I just loaded up the standard servo sweep sketch. Um, and the signal pin of the servo is just connected to pin 9 there. I found that servos always require uh, a little bit of oomph in the current so I connected a 12 volt power supply to the uh, Arduino Mega power input instead of just relying on the USB. I'm just going to show you how I came up with those cog designs. I didn't use any particular cog creation program uh, such as I know is out there. Um, I just used the circle tool in SketchUp. If you set the sides here that's going to determine how many teeth your cog will turn out with. And if you, set, if you work out the circumference of the circle that's going to tell you how long, how far the rack is going to travel if you're making a, a cog and rack system, rack and pinion system. Um, I actually miscalculated with the servo because of course it only turns 180 degrees so it's going to travel half of this radius. Um, I have 21 set for the sides there. Uh, that's just from the last cog that I designed. I'm just going to create one with radius 10. And it's actually helpful to create a larger circle and you'll see why in a second. It doesn't really matter the radius of that one. Next I'm going to draw a line from the center to the midpoint of one of the sides and then keeping 21 sides I'm going to draw another circle but with the the first point on that line so it's going to be offset exactly half the width of a side from the first circle. Um, this is obviously going to determine the depth of the of the teeth on this cog. So the first circle is 10 millimeters radius. If I create this one at 8 millimeters radius, the teeth will be 2 millimeters deep in all. Next. I'm going to delete those lines and then draw one tooth.
and then I'm going to delete the rest of the lines there so this is why I drew a larger circle so that you kind of get a filled in space it may not be necessary I'm not sure I'm going to double click and select those lines here and go for the rotate tool centered on the origin then I'm going to press alt that may be different on uh, on PCs then you get the little plus so that's a copy and rotate so starting from that point I'm just going to rotate this to that point so that's one copy uh, we know that this will have 21 sides so I want to repeat that copy motion 20 times so right after I did that rotation I'm going to press X 20 and press enter and then you get your rough cog I'm going to delete the outer circle there you have it what I usually do then is measure in from one of these to the exact center so that's eight millimeters and then if you make a group of all of this then it retains its center wherever you move it in your model now the the uh, the cog that you saw earlier on had a kind of uh, had a curve at the top and bottom of the teeth um, I'm just going to show you how I did that so this is the same process as before just draw my probably don't need the large circle so at this time I'm going to draw two teeth to start off with or maybe one and a half teeth so I'm just deleting half a millimeter from each of these lines here I'm doing that by drawing another line exactly lined up with that but entering 0.5 millimeters by hand and just deleting that now I'm going to draw the curves on the end of the teeth now you see it goes pink when it finds the correct tangent just double click then and that's your curve if you delete that line now this is what you can copy to create the gear so just the same as before I'm going to go for the rotate tool center it on the origin press alt or whatever it is you press on a PC and select that first point there then I'm going to move it so it lines up with the end point of that same shape and click then press times 20 or that is x20 on the keyboard press enter and it doesn't really line up I just ran through the exact same steps again with a 20 toothed gear um, and in fact everything lined up perfectly in this case so it seems like this technique works best with even numbers of teeth uh, if you're going to put the uh, curve on the top and bottom of the teeth of the gear if you're making sharp tooth gears it shouldn't really be so much of a problem um, and at the smaller scales you don't really need to make um, at least on a laser cutter you don't need to put radiuses on the corners of the gears uh, because the laser will kind of create that as it melts through the plastic anyhow um, I'm just going to draw the center on there 19.35 roughly just grouping that together now I want to try to create a rack uh, that is a straight gear which has teeth which will mesh with this one 
Um, and the way that I'll be able to do that um, is actually by going backwards. So if I find this measurement, 4.69, and this measurement, 6.25, what I'm going to do is find the average of that measurement 4.69 plus 6.26 then divide that gets us about 5.5 .5. so I'm going to draw a rectangle to put some of these teeth in so we know the tooth depth is this measurement 4.75 so I'm going to draw that 4.75 here and then measure this average out a few times 5.5 .5 or 5.47 okay 5.48 5.48 5.47 and then half that measurement again 2.74 2 2.74 2.74 so just to recap what I did there I found the top measurement between the peaks of the teeth of the gear and the measurement between the troughs of the gear that is that if you extended the lines of the tooth uh, back to where they met um, I found the average length of that and transferred that onto this rectangular piece and I also marked halfway points so when I draw between these points here you'll get a straightened version of the teeth of that gear so I'm going to use the same technique to put on the radiuses on the corners as I did on the circular version of this gear so I'm going to measure in one millimeter on all of these and delete that last millimeter of each line so that's as far as I went and then draw on the tangent sh uh, curve tangent at vertex again So that's enough to kind of demonstrate the technique that I've been using. I'm going to make a component of that. So I just magically recreated that gear after I pressed the undo button. I'm going to see, hopefully demonstrate that it will mesh. There you go. I'm not sure whether this is the perfect technique for creating uh, circular and linear gears but or rack and pinion systems but it certainly seems to work with whatever measurements I throw at it. So the method I used to fit the cog onto the servo was to measure the radius of this kind of servo fitting little thing sticking out of the servo here the outside radius and then I as best as I could measured the inside radius uh, that is the distance between the two lowest points of the teeth. Um, I did both those measurements using a vernier caliper. I then transferred those into SketchUp. So I used the cog creation technique 
to create this kind of positive template of that little fixture there. So then I can I created a component which I can then flatten into the centre of any cog that I want to attach to a servo. I obviously flattened that, deleted the place where the shapes intersected and then grouped the shapes together again. Um, this didn't come out perfectly because obviously the resolution of the laser cutter isn't quite good enough to get these sharp teeth here. But it did create an accurate enough pattern of bumps so that when the cog was fitted to the servo it turns very positively, there's no slippage or anything. Um, and when I introduced this 1.5mm thick piece with a hole for the screw and screwed it on, uh, it's very solid now. For the project that I'm working on, I needed a linear motion of about 10 centimeters. The larger gear has a circumference of about 10 centimeters, but the servo can only turn 180 degrees. So I created a smaller gear with a circumference of about 5 centimeters and glued that onto one of the larger gears to create the speed multiplier gearbox you see here. I hope you found that video useful and interesting. Please do subscribe if you're interested in CNC machines, Arduinos, fixing cars, basically anything tedious and technical. And do please hit the like button if you think you're going to use this knowledge in the future. Goodbye. Oh.